the question here in Belém is not whether states have obligations to act on climate change. The court has already answered that. The only question here now is whether parties will honor these obligations or will they openly choose to ignore them. The ICJ's opinion tells us that this is not just a moral failure, it is also a legal one. I believe that the ICJAO is a leverage to the discussions on the legal obligations of states. And it has also declared and pronounced clearly that states do have obligations, binding obligations. ICJAO itself is not legally binding. The law upon which it is advising is absolutely legally binding. The ICJAO makes 401, 111 references to the IPCC reports. CEO negotiators are using this in the room to, to reiterate that the IPCC reports is extensively referenced in, by the ICJAO. The ICJAO established the 1.5 degree limit as the primary temperature goal and as a legal standard under the Paris Agreement for all state climate policies. This advisory opinion gives us a yardstick for the fights that we're now seeing in finance, in closing the ambition gap and loss and damage, and also in the global stock take. The court was crystal clear that states must cooperate to address loss and damage and support adaptation. The ICJ's opinion reinforces that continuing to expand fossil fuels, knowing the harm, is incompatible with states' legal obligations. We cannot discredit the ruling and honestly uh, it's just so disappointing to see uh, some of the ways in which um, uh, the discrediting process is being taking place in these rooms. One thing it can be said is that countries that have been blocking or trying to slow down progress are again continuing to do this and trying to block the advisory. And we know who these countries are, discrediting the science, not recognizing the IPCC, not, uh, not recognizing the 1.5 degree temperature goal. The ICJ sets the moral compass for COP30 and that is in three simple things. It sets the direction, it sets the boundary and it sets the test for integrity. Now the question for negotiators and ministers in the coming days is will they let that truth guide the text or will they try to negotiate around it? Thank you.